there have been three bills that Congress has passed dealing with COVID, uh, and a fourth is probably uh, going to be on the way. The first one, phase one, was really focused on uh, how, how do we make sure the CDC and public health entities have enough funding. There's a little bit of SBA funding, but nothing to write home about. The major focus was on uh, public health. The second bill is really significant, and I've heard from Judd and a lot of the California operators. It creates a mandate for employer for small business employers to offer paid sick leave for coronavirus and its effects um, almost immediately, and it runs through the end of the year. Now that mandate is reimbursed by the federal government in the form of a refundable tax credit. The, the, the concerns that we've heard from California through JOT are what we've heard from every state, which is cash flow for you right now is being measured in days, not weeks. And if suddenly you have a new mandate where you are, you are paying out the paid sick leave and uh, you'll be reimbursed by the federal government, that puts an unacceptable squeeze on the cash flow. We are working with, uh, we, we fought like hell to change it to a model where it'd be administered and funded directly by the government which is something actually that Speaker Pelosi advanced, um, the White House did not want to have to own it, to be honest. They wanted a program that, uh, they didn't want a program that would fail on their watch. So instead they created a mandate for the small business to do it. It's hugely problematic and it's hugely problematic for small businesses. So we're going to be working with the uh, CRA and with the folks at Treasury and the IRS to try to minimize the impact that this is going to have on operators. Um, the third piece of legislation they did was phase three, and that's the piece of legislation that they just now passed by voice vote in the House uh, about an hour ago. The president will sign it later today. That represents really the recovery and relief package. I'm not going to call it stimulus because I don't think it's going to stimulate much when it comes to the restaurant industry, but it is a $2 trillion package that aims to really just shovel cash out to employers, to employees, and to at least begin to stem the bleeding. Um, the crown jewel of that for us, for our industry, is a uh, $349 billion loan program that'll be administered by the SBA that's targeted at small businesses. And a small business is a business concern that has less than 500 people total. Now, that includes a lot of restaurants that probably excludes many more. Certainly if you have the sort of restaurant groups that may have eight restaurants, six restaurants, and 600 employees, under the, the way the bill is drafted, or under the way the bill was initially drafted, we wouldn't seek relief. A big win that we secured as an industry is something that we worked with the hotels to secure. And what it says is that for, for restaurants and hotels, that 500 number is disaggregated and it's by per location. So let's say you're a restaurant that has five locations, 800 employees. If you were any other business in the country, you would not be eligible for these loans because you have eight, you have more than 500. Under the carve out that we secured for the industry, the 500 number is counted on a per location basis. That means those eight restaurants, those, excuse me, those five restaurants, for that employer that has 800 employees, as long as each of those restaurants has less than 500 employees, each restaurant is considered a small business and the restaurant group is eligible to apply for that funding and that loan. That loan has provisions in it. Uh, the, the, I'm going back up. The loan is how much can you borrow? It is written that you can borrow two and a half times your average monthly payroll for last year. And if you're a seasonal employee, if you're in an area that where you, you, you have spike, you have peaks and troughs, it gives you windows for the spring and summer months. And you can draw from that as well. So you can borrow 2,500% of your average monthly payroll. Um, the, pay, the, the funds don't need to be reimbursed for a year. And there are some fairly generous provisions by which it is waived. You do not, the debt is forgiven. Um, I know the title of this is rent. I wanna, I'm going to read this because I want to make sure I get this right. Um, if you use it for payroll costs, you do not have to pay the uh, debt back. If you use it for mortgage interest or rent, ut or rent and utilities, you do not have to pay it back. There, are, there is a string that's associated with that, of course. 
the string is there is a threshold for how many employees do you need to retain full-time employees or, or equivalents do you need to retain in order to get that uh, debt forgiven um, and the answer is how much is still uh, TBD we are worried to be honest, our the, the, uh, I should back up and say that this is a big piece of legislation that was written in 10 days, which by Washington standards is uh, light speed. They never operate this quickly on something this big. And what's really important is that it's drafted clearly, because if there's ambiguity, that means that SBA is going to have to make a decision. It means that DOL is going to have to make a decision, Treasury, et cetera. There is ambiguity in parts of the text. So everything that I've told you so far is in the base text of the bill. So we have legislation that is drafted, that's out there. We have a summary. Where it starts getting questionable is people are coming to us and saying, well, I'm organized as this kind of LLC or this kind of SPE. Do I qualify? How do the loans work? What tell me about the employee retention? Those are questions that the SBA is going to have to answer. And the administration is really going to have to nail the dismount and get this pro get these programs up and running and operational and get the money out the door quickly, or the whole thing will be a failure. The good news, the bad news is that you know SBA has a checkered past on doing something like that. The good news is uh, this is not Katrina. This is nationwide. SBA is taking on employees from other agencies. They are epically staffing up to deal with the onslaught of, uh, of applications and processing that, they, that they're that they going to need if they're going to make this work. This bill is going to be signed by President Trump later today, and then the ball is officially going to be handed over to the administration. Beyond the 7A loan program, um, there are a few other things in there here as well. There are some tax credits that are created, employee retention tax credits. That's a program that's really aimed at natural disasters where the, the, you get a tax credit based on the employees that you're keeping, that you've kept on. Um, QUIP is finally fixed. It took a pandemic, but QUIP is finally fixed. Our big question is how retroactive is that going to be and how will that affect those of you that might have taken net operating losses against that? I'll add that net operating losses uh, is, is in there as well to allow if there are restaurants who, have, who need to carry back losses, uh, they can put those in there as well. Um, I'm just checking to make sure I'm not missing anything on my sort of rough summary of things. Um, the next steps for us are um, really how do we keep the, the next step for us is really how do we keep the associate, the administration keyed in on the issues important to us that we're going to need guidance on. So the Department of Labor, they owe us a lot of answers on how they're going to implement a mandated paid leave policy for restaurants.